L'objectif de cette vidéo est de déterminer le potentiel énergétique. This video aims at determining the uh, energy potential of uh, windmills. We will calculate the power of wind and the uh, space and time variations. Wind owes its energy to sun, like is the case with most renewable energies. It receives from the Earth receives from the sun 10 million billion watts, or 1.7 multiplies 10 to the power of 17. Only 1 to 2 percent is converted in wind energy. When will fall essentially on the equator. And if we calculate the uh, thermal balance, we have a surplus of energy on the equator and a deficit on the poles, which means that uh, heat is transferred from the equator to the poles. Warmer air masses on the equator rise in altitude and cool down over the poles. The system is slightly more complicated. Obviously, there are several cells in each atmosphere, hemisphere that are drawn in rotation by the Earth's rotation. In summary, the air masses uh, move and create wind. A windmill will capture the kinetic energy from the wind and convert it in a torque, which will rotate the uh, rotor blades. Kinetic energy is based on the uh, air mass, the air weight, the surface covered by the uh, wind and the uh, surface of the blades and the wind velocity. EC is half of MV2. For instance, a 40 meter radius blade yields 5,000 square meters. If the wind blows at 10 meters per second, 36 kilometers per hour, in one second, the thickness of the disk is 10 meters multiplied by the, the area, we get the volume. The volume is uh, multiplied by the air weight, volume mass 1.225. We have 61 tons of air mass as a result. Kinetic energy, therefore, will be 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 joules or 3 megajoules, which corresponds to the energy of a 61-ton lorry moving at 36 kilometers per hour. If in one second this uh, lorry hits a wall, it develops a power which equals the energy divided by time. In one second, we have the same relationship that we had earlier. Wind power will be a half of mv square. We have shown earlier that mass is rho times the section multiplied by the thickness of the disk, hence the velocity. So multiplied by v square, we end up with a relationship half of rho sv cubic. On the figure, here we see the evolution of this power based on the wind velocity. The power increases very quickly with the wind velocity, and if we multiply the wind velocity by 2, the power is multiplied by 2 at the power of 3 and 8. In the previous example, 3 megajoules of kinetic energy correspond to a power of 3 megawatts, which would supply energy for 600 to 900 house houses. Now we're going to look at the var wind variations. We know that uh, wind velocity is equal to zero above ground, and up as we go up in altitude, the velocity will remain constant. In the boundary layer, the wind will be influenced by uh, the asperities uh, on the ground, also called rugosities. There is a very simple law that provides a V velocity at H altitude. If we know uh, both numbers, we have the N index, which is a rugosity index that re depends on the roughness. If we have a uh, flat land N equals zero, in a uh, plane we have 0.16, in a moderately uh, rough area, forest or town, the index will increase uh, up to 0.4. On this graph, we have shown a wind profile. We see the, speed, the velocity evolving depending on the altitude. We have two cases, n is close to zero. So the land is not very rough. The blue curve is almost vertical. Regardless of the height, the wind velocity will be the same. This is what happens about in, at sea or in offshore. In an urban area, the index is close to 0.4, and therefore the profile will show that uh, velocity would increase uh, depending on altitude. And this means that rotor blades must be placed very high. Wind will also depend on the uh, ground topology. It is uh, recommended to place the uh, windmills uh, in a uh, bottleneck valley or on top of a hill. I'm, I'll try and explain. Take uh, a uh, watering hose, uh, the input 
flow is the same as the output flow. The water coming in is the same as the water that goes out. If the uh, tube has the same cross-section at input and output, the flow, which is uh, the cross-section multiplied by the speed, shows that we have exactly the same thing at the input and at the output. Now, if we pinch the tube in the middle, there will be a decreased cross-section, and locally the speed will increase. This is exactly what happens if uh, we place a hill on a flat land, the virtual tube is changed vertically above the hill, and uh, locally the wind velocity will increase vertically above the hill. And as we go up in altitude, the wind velocity will be restored to what it used to be before. Behind the hill, the wind profile will be reverted, it will be a vortex, uh, and therefore it is uh, not advisable to place a windmill there. Wind may vary also according to the time and the topology. In the mountains during the day, the air masses will rise from the valley to the top of a mountain, whereas at night things go the other way around. The same goes for uh, coastal areas uh, near the sea. Air masses uh, rise in the atmosphere and uh, they will be cooled down and the uh, wind will go from the sea to the uh, land and the other way around at night. And this is uh, shown on the compass rows. In some places in the mountains or near the sea, there are two preferred directions which are opposed. We'll try now and assess the energy uh, potential of a site for a wind turbine. Before a wind turbine is installed, uh, normally measurements uh, are made with a uh, wind gauge placed on a measuring tower. There are wind sensors for direction and speed measurements. Why uh, place uh, the uh, towers at several heights? Well, because it measures the rugosity, the roughness of the site. The wind gauge will measure the velocity. The uh, weather vane will measure the direction. Measurements are taken every 10 minutes over one month, several months, or one year, providing data for a uh, compass rows, uh, and we will know what are the preferred directions for the wind so that we place the wind turbine in the right place. By calculating the data, we can trace the uh, velocity distribution. We record the number of hours during which the wind blew at a given velocity class. If here the uh, horizontal class is the wind velocity going from 0 to 25 meters per second, and vertically we have the uh, axis graduated in hours, number of hours, over one year. From this chart of wind velocity, one may calculate the power. You remember the formula that I gave you earlier. If the power is multiplied by the number of hours of wind, we get the energy. In the right-hand side graph, we see the energy distribution and the sum of all the energies for all wind velocities provides the energy potential for the site being studied. Here we, she, we show two examples of uh, possible site locations for a windmill. One is around the Rennes area with not much wind. We see that in this uh, location, the wind blows for a long time at a very low speed and for not very long at high speed, whereas uh, in around the area of Perpignan, we see the contrary happens. There are many more hours of uh, high speed wind and less hours of low speed wind. So if you calculate the energy with the previous formula, we find that the two curves are different. The blue curve shows that there is more potential energy than in the uh, orange curve. And calculations uh, will be made to sum up all the energies. So we find the area above the curve. And in the uh, Ren area, with little wind, the energy will be approximately 470 kilowatt hours per square meter of wind. The calculation is obviously made over one year. For Perpignan, the figure will be higher, close to 1,800 kilowatt hours per square meter, again, over one year. If we use, only use the uh, average figure, we can determine the best locations and we can draw a map that you can find on the internet. We see that in Europe, the uh, windiest uh, areas are near the uh, Lion Gulf in southern France and in northern Europe, the dark blue 
areas on the map. And we find approximately the same thing in offshore windmill locations. And again, the windiest areas are in the North Sea and in the Gulf de Lyon near Marseille. Thank you. Merci de votre attention. Thank you.